Frida, we know quite a long time. Uh, you are a very good friend of Herbert for decades, I can tell. Um, you studied informatics and mathematics. And when you did that, there was no computer art existing at all. So uh, we will have a little talk now about uh, the history and the beginnings of computer art. And I'm very happy that you are also joining our uh, summit in, in July. Just a yeah. tiny, not important correction. Yeah. I did not study informatics by the time I was a student. This did not exist yet. No? So I, I studied only mathematics. Okay, then we begin with mathematics. So go ahead. How did you begin uh, st yeah. studying mathematics and how did you get into art? Yeah. I tell you the, a, a little anecdote, uh, which I believe sheds a really good light uh, on that question. I was working as a student in the computing center of the University of Stuttgart with a wonderful boss uh, with a nice name, Austrian by origin, Walter Knödel. No? Walter Knödel. <laughs> Okay, and one day, I, I, as a student in my fourth semester of mathematics, uh, had an office there, you know, uh, which I was beautiful to, to use, you know, because no other student had an office in the computing center. You know. And how, how, so did I, you, how did you get that? Yeah, because I was a, what was called in German, Hilfsassistent, you no, know, a an as assistant helper or something. And what was I doing there? I was writing programs, um, highly developed programs, uh, a challenging job that he, Professor Knödel, had entrusted upon me. You know? So he one day came <laughs> telling me, um, Herr Nacke, wir kaufen eine Zeichenmaschine. We are going to buy a drawing machine. So I say, uh huh, because I have no idea what that is. You know? I only understand, okay, that will be a machine, yes, to draw, but what that is, I have no idea. You know? So he continues, um, but we don't get any software. So now I react, but that's bad, you know, because I already understood that much. In the computing center, if you do anything, you need software. And he then thirdly asks, or t tells me, would you do it? Fantastic, no? fantastic. I say, yes. No? Um, this is such a fantastic situation because I learned here that this fellow, Professor Knödel, had so much trust in that young student that he asked him to do something that he, the student, could not possibly know. Um, but this, this situation told me, if you ever become a teacher, you must trust in your students and never you know, um, feel, oh, they probably will not be able to do anything. In, in my life, that has changed everything later when I myself indeed became a teacher. Now, I hate because of this exams, because exams are the means in the hand of teachers to show that they don't trust their students. Fantastic situation. Uh, so here I was more down to earth now. Uh, and trying to understand what will it mean to write programs that draw. You know? And by the time uh, I had no, just no idea, and I guess I was quite alone in the world almost, uh, I later learned, yes, I learned, that there were two other p persons, as it so happens, their names also start with an N, Georg Nees in Germany, uh, working for the Siemens company, and Michael Noll in the US. And th these three, Nees, Noll, 
and Nake are the big three ends you know, of computer graphics. <laughs> So you That's really, the anecdote. Yeah, no? you, you really started from scratch. Um, so, uh, and at first you did the programs, mm -hmm. but uh, there must have been a point where you said you, own, you do not only want to write the programs, you only want to use them. Maybe um, I could imagine that you just tried out whether they work properly before you uh, finished the Absolutely. official programming. Yeah. Absolutely, that's absolutely necessary. Um, whenever you write a program, it, in this particular case, it becomes a little more complex. Whenever you write a program for whichever particular function, uh, then your job culminates in you must test it. And you must test it very so thoroughly you know, uh, because only simple programs uh, you can test mathematically now as soon as a program some piece of software uh, reaches some sort of complexity and those drawing programs of course were immediately rather complex um, as soon as this is the case you must design a um, series of tests in order to gain enough trust so that you can actually offer that program, that software, as a service to people who come from the other departments. You know? mm -hmm. And that was my job. Indeed, you know, I had to sit down at that time uh, with the people from the other uh, institutes, sit down at the computer and help them use the software I had developed, because they had no idea of now how do I handle with a computer, you know, mm -hmm. even if they trusted me? And, and what was uh, the purpose of, of the painting machine? So uh, for the, the people um, in, in the university, what was done with that kind of machine? For what purposes yeah. was it uh, used? These, other, these people from other institutions had one and only one reason to use the drawing machine, namely, in their usually very, very mathematical research, and there was some physics also entering, in this uh, research to visualize the results that otherwise would be only mathematics. And for the engineers, uh, I learned then, uh, this was really important, to have drawings to back up or even to help them understand the mathematics better. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the, the main reason, um, well, I guess originally it was the only reason for the computing center to have invested quite a bit of money, by the way, uh, into the drawing machine. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had in Stuttgart the ninth in the world of this machine. Uh, so we were kind of um, pioneers, perhaps. Um, at least how I then misused the machine. You know? Of course, my first tests were mathematical functions. But then one day I thought, this is boring. Why don't I break out of this given frame and add something, namely randomness, you know, random functions, uh, in order to do something that is only to a certain degree controlled by me. And the other part, this is where randomness comes in, um, will be, so to speak, this is a dangerous word I'm now going to use, um, so to speak, some intuition in the drawing. You know? Now, of course, I knew there is no intuition in the machine. You know? However, if an artist draws or paints, a lot of intuition enters into this painting. You know? And I then, I drew, I, tr I tried to draw, to draw a parallel between 
the intuition of the artist and random processes on the computer. Mm -hmm. Just a short sidestep because um, I, I, of course, want to know which kind of machine was it you were using. You mm -hmm. mentioned there were only a few uh, all over the mm -hmm. world. Uh, where did it come from? Yeah, this particular drawing machine uh, had the official name Zuse Graphomat Z. Oh, 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 well, I say it in German, but yeah, uh, Zuse, yeah, that cannot be done otherwise. And Graphomat, uh, if you pronounce it English, well, Graphomat, no, <laughs> graphic machine, um, Z64. No? Uh, so Zuse, all the machines that Zuse had constructed had such codes, Z always for Zuse himself, and then a number. You know? And the 64 stood for that drawing machine. Um, and the fact that we got one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it cost around 100,000 was that you? No, time it was Deutschmark, yeah. Deutschmark. <laughs> <laughs> this is in 1963, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, the fact that the computing center had that machine and offered that service to the other institutions uh, was hindered in so far, far as the software that the Zuse company had produced themselves would not work on our computer. Which was? Which, which was a standard electric uh, Lorenz. Coming you know? from the local supplier. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, the computing center could offer their service only if they themselves developed the software, and that became my job. You know? So in a sense, as a student in the fourth semester, I was providing a service to the entire University of Stuttgart. <laughs> so we, we scratched already the art world uh, with your um, experiences. So how did you get deeper in it and I know there is a very important guy in your life, he is called Max Benze. Uh, how did you get in touch with him and how did you focus uh, in, in the art uh, environment doing, yeah. doing <clears throat> computer art? Um, Benze, first of all, was extremely important in what I did there. Second, he himself did not show any real interest. You know? He liked it. Oh, that his influence <laughs> was on me and I did something that people got to know. And the third is that <clears throat> when I started to test my software, which means I had developed it to a point where I thought, okay, this will most likely be correct now. I thought, now how do I develop these tests? because I had to test drawings and not numbers. Um, so I thought, okay, 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 uh, some lines in this direction and that direction. But then I stopped and thought again, why don't I do it randomly? So I gave up the systematics of testing software uh, as you know the, the rules require you do it systematically, and I replaced the systematic test by random test. And this then is the origin of me thinking, well, if I do this, then why don't I do the entire drawing randomly? No, not just the line, I do everything randomly. That was the breakthrough, really, no, for me to believe, look, world. I'm doing something here that needs intuition. This will become random numbers in my case. And secondly, that intuition will produce something of aesthetic quality. That was the challenge to myself. You know? And I guess I was a bit arrogant then, you know? because I believed I will be able to do this. 
nobody else. <laughs> Max Benze was in Stuttgart as well. He was a mathematician and you had also lectures. Uh, yes. You heard lectures from him, right? And got yeah. in contact with him. And, and I think there was a, a huge exchange. I had, starting in my second semester of studying mathematics, uh, always uh, visited Benz's lectures, you know, always Mondays at five in the evening or in the afternoon. You know, uh, and this was such a fantastic encounter because I didn't understand his philosophy. You know, I was way too stupid. But I realized uh, in each of his lectures, something is happening here that must be of greatest importance. And there was a very stupid link. Benze was an outspoken atheist. They, he, he was under heavy problems in Baden-Württemberg because of outspokenly saying, I'm an atheist. For me, this was fantastic. Because I had been an atheist since I was 14, and now I got to know a professor who was also doing this. This. I, I have no idea how important this was in my life. You know? um, I therefore had always, uh, I then went to Benze and told him, I must uh, insert something here, uh, there, there was in 1965, February 1965, a first exhibition in the world, we now know, uh, of what was later called computer art, a, t a little exhibition, just 12 n nice little drawings by Georg Nees. And this for me was a sensation. I always went to these exhibitions that Benze arranged for, and now the exhibition was computer art. So I think, heaven's sake, there is somebody else in the world who is doing what I'm doing. <laughs> How is this allowed? No? So I go to Benze and tell him, you know what? Uh, if you come to the computing center, I can show you things also. Uh, Benze says, I'm not interested. No? <laughs> so that, that was a great disappointment because I now believe uh, he would. I, I thought, Susanne, I was really arrogant. I thought my drawings were more advanced than Georg Nese's. You know? And I believe they were, but that's just arrogance. <laughs> I believe an artist must be arrogant a bit. You know? uh, did, you, did you think about being an artist in comparison to being a tr to the traditional artist? So did you think about um, the gap between art world that existed at that time and what you did because no artist visual artists uh, had any uh, did like mathematics and, yeah. and machines and so on so yeah. what did you think about that gap uh, in earlier times and and maybe how do you look to it nowadays uh, that uh, could be a bit I was, different I'm, i i was thinking about this in I'm preparing for our meeting now, um, and I did not become clear. What I think to still remember is that I very soon became rather convinced of, yes, I am a new kind of artist, a new kind of artist in the following sense, a short formulation, think the image, don't make it. This very soon became my conviction that this is the, the particular kind of art that I was involved with, uh, and in fact, am involved up to now, but that's not important. Um, when this thought turned up in myself, you know, and that was a bit later uh, than 1965, in February 66, I had an exhibition in the Deutsche Rechenzentrum in Darmstadt, doesn't exist anymore. And this became the breakthrough. Um, FAZ 
wrote an article, a long article about that exhibition. And they wrote this only because it was at Deutsches Rechenzentrum. You know? um, Benze never appeared in FAZ. You know? uh, so um, that exhibition I had there um, was, I believe, at least as far as West Germany was concerned, the breakthrough, the appearance, in a funny sense, uh, of then called computer art, I always called it algorithmic art, uh, in the press. They made fun of it. No, that was not a very serious article. It was, a, okay, yeah, there are some people in Stuttgart who are doing stupid things and they think this is art. No, we don't accept this as art. That was the tone of that article. No? Um, but this, in my reception of it, meant that I now defend it. I became defensive. You know? We are doing art. You just don't understand it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think at that point I would like to introduce Herbert uh, into your life uh, or ask you, uh, can you remember when you met him first and, and do you have any uh, remembering of what you were talking about, that would be very nice to hear from you. Uh, I do not actively remember, but it must have been in the year 1966. Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm insecure. Uh, somebody in Frankfurt, whose name I also forgot, um, arranged for some kind of meeting. And I believe this is where Herbert and myself for the first time met, sometime during the year 1966. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, I know that he visited you in Stuttgart once, at least at the very be early times there. Uh, yes. And uh, you showed him also the Susemisch Graphomat, as far as I can right, remember. Right, yeah. Th this I remember only vaguely. So, for instance, I would not have remember that this was also in 1966. Mm -hmm. But I do remember that he once came you know, out of curiosity. You know? I, I guess he had no opportunity elsewhere to see this drawing machine, which by the way, uh, Susanne, um, that, one, that machine itself was a sensation. The Americans by the time did not have this quality for automatic drawing. Suse was, in this respect, a real pioneer. He was a much more important pioneer of computers. <laughs> but in his older times, again, a pioneering uh, activity uh, that he must be celebrated for, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Herbert, apparently, um, it should have been possible for him to, in, in the Munich area, not to also, but he had no opportunity, apparently. Therefore, he once came, and I guess this must be, um, unless that Frankfurt meeting was before, um, where we, he and myself, uh, met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you were also together at New Tendencies in Zagreb, yep. where, where you exhibited. And um, yeah, then out of a sudden, there was a gap in your computer graphics activity. Um, do you want to talk about that gap you had in your own artistic life uh, and why you stopped doing computer art? Or is this something you, you yeah. don't want to reflect <laughs> about today? And, and I try to be uh, uh, quick here. I indeed stopped doing this, which was so fantastic for my life, in 1969. Um, 1969 is still, you know, very close to 1968, the X68 movement. And I had gotten involved in the 1968 movement, you know, radically, really radically. <clears throat> um, because of this, I then decided I must stop doing computer art, algorithmic art, because this was against my now political convictions. And therefore, I wrote a tiny little note, only it was not even an article, there should be no computer art. Published in Page, uh, Page was the, 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 the little journal 
um, of the Computer Art Society. And there I announced this, there should be no computer art. And the reason was political. Because if we do use computers for su such purposes, you know, we try to show to the world, oh, computers are not bad. And I, meanwhile, have believed computers are bad because they exploit workers and they suppress people. This was my firm conviction. Fortunately, I then, um, um, how do you say, um, migrated to Canada. <laughs> I left Germany. I did not want to be in this country anymore. <laughs> but, but did you think it is better or different in Canada? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you came back here and um, you also came back to we are very happy about that. You came back to computer art. When when did you move in again, and how did you manage to do that uh, against your um, uh, conviction before yeah. um, that you do not want to use that uh, bad machines? I, I say just one word on the first side, and this is the year I first had in Toronto, uh, 1968-69. Um, I did nothing but computer art, and I was. I had that job there because of this, no? Fantastic. When I moved on to Vancouver, um, I did not do any computer art anymore, no? Th there I had, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. I did computer graphics in the proper sense. Um, and then there is a gap indeed until 1984, <laughs> funnily, no? Um, somebody approached me in 1984, oh, haven't you... Um, done pictures with computers? Yes, yes. Oh, I want you to write in a lefted, leftist uh, journal a little article about this. I thought about this and then I said, okay, yeah, I do this. And with that article, I came back into the field. You know? It then intrigued me so much that I thought, why don't I use my younger years and not just do, I was meanwhile in Bremen um, as a teacher in computer graphics, why don't I resume this, you know, the aesthetic side of it, not just the technological side of it. And I, I believe I'm glad, meanwhile I'm very glad about this move because Susanne, that means I have water on the two shoulders aesthetics on one and algorithmics on the other and i firmly believe that i'm this is a little arrogant to say um, uh, i'm kind of good careful in both areas you know the technological side as well as the aesthetic side in my life this is wonderful you know? So um, you are back to art. Art has developed, computer art has developed into the 21st century now. Um, there is crypto art, there's AI art. So of course I want to know what your opinion is about that new uh, activities of uh, the young generation of computer and digital artists and algorithmic artists. Yeah. What they are doing is fantastic, without any reservation I say this, it's fantastic. And it is way beyond, in its new appearances, beyond that that was possible in the mid-1960s. That was trivial in comparison. However, the principal thoughts are the same. And now I make a critical remark now, because software, uh, there, there is packages of software that are so extremely powerful that it has become almost, almost a triviality to come up with interesting pictures, very complex pictures, without doing much yourself. And, because maybe, this... and also maybe without knowing why they are as they are. So yeah. the code behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The understanding now, I believe, I should be careful, is superficial. 
No, because you can do something, and when you show that to somebody else, they are thrilled by what you can do. What I, if I understand anything of art, is that the artist, in order to become a real artist, must dig down, no? down to the basics always. No? Uh, when you think of Gerhard Richter nowadays, no? the artist of the world, he doesn't draw his strip paintings himself. Yes, he has other people who help him, and they use machines. You know? However, he is still very clear about what is happening there. You know? I'm convinced. I still have not have the guts to visit him. I want to visit him, um, and I must do this. Um, the artist uh, who does not understand what his art is down to the basics. He is not an artist. He, he, he may have great exhibitions, but he loses, he misses something that makes the artist to be an artist, I believe. <laughs> okay, then, uh, Frieda, then I would like to ask you for a maybe final statement in the sense, um, do you have any advice for the young artists? doing art so what would you um, tell them i would tell get your fingers into the matter you know, and strip up your leaves you no know, and now deep digging you no know, getting dirty uh, with all the dirt in order to come up with something great that you know and understand I think that was a final, uh, that was a very beautiful final uh, statement of you. Um, and I really um, appreciate it that you had time for me and we, we had the possibility to talk a bit about your history. And uh, I would ask you already uh, if you would like to talk to me after our summit um, to, to do some kind of um, epilogue and your uh, findings or impressions you gathered there about the uh, event. So maybe there are some new findings for you uh, concerning the young artists that will be there as well and, and show their work. And yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to do that. Susanna, I would love, I would be honored, I would be greatly honored uh, to do this no? at your meeting. No?